here in accounting. I'm going to maximize this. You see items in the middle. Um, once we've got some items entered, we can browse. This browse is very similar to the browse that you saw in donations, where we've got various uh, transactions we can view. We can look at the transaction. Here's the debit and the credit. We have some money that went into checking. It looks like it might have come over from, from donations. Uh, I can make a correction here. I can make a reversal. And I mentioned it on the donation side. When I say reverse, we aren't deleting anything. Uh, nothing gets deleted in the program. There's a very tight audit trail because we feel very obligated to help the church protect its money and, and account for it and, and keep uh, traceability of it all. If I'm looking for something specific, just like on the donation side, I've got this transaction browser options where I can, let's say I can limit it. Let's say I only want to see items that affected the checking account um, that came over from donations. And we click that. And there we go. So there are all the, and you see these by transaction type, you can tell that these were all donation items that came over uh, that went into the checking account. So I could print this information. I could export it. I could uh, email it to someone, export it as a spreadsheet. Uh, a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Enter, entering income. We can enter the bills when they arrive. If you want to pay them at a later date, we can move money using transfer from checking to savings or from general fund to the building fund. And Church Windows has a full accounts receivable portion built into it. Churches with daycare centers and um, preschools love this part of the program. You can create your statements with all the flexibility that you could your donation statements. Just lay it out exactly the way you want, drag and drop, put the fields in place where you want them. Uh, denote when how much the person owes for the current period. Denote when payments come back. And start the whole process all over again. So it's just a continual, nice accounts receivable part built into the program. Okay, we said we'd talk about transfer donations when we got to accounting. And, well, here we are. So let's look at it. Uh, it's a little bit involved in the setup here in the default account links tab here. Along the left, these are all the different accounts that you saw on the other side of the program. And I'm going to tell the, the program what should be debited when money comes over from donations. It's typically a checking account all the way down. There might be a special account, a special savings for Christmas or something like that occasionally, but for the most part, it's pretty much checking all the way down. On the credit side, it's typically an income account all the way down, although with this being church software, we are definitely uh, flexible in handling things like money that comes in for a current period that has been earmarked for a future period. Basically, I just defined prepaid pledges. Um, and church windows can definitely put, have that money go into an income account or credit toward an income account, but be set aside in a liability account where it can be then shifted around and used in the future. Uh, some other exceptions, you can also have things like what, what we call pass-throughs, where let's say for crop walk, if the church doesn't want crop walk money to show up as actual income, it can go directly into a liability account where you've got full traceability and at any point in time you can pull a report, a general ledger, that will show you what the starting balance was, what came in, what we sent off, and how much we're still holding aside. Another exception that Church Windows handles very well is down here in, uh, I should see it pretty quick, here we go, Youth Trips. So you see this money when it comes over from donations is going into the Youth Trips expense account. So it acts as a reimbursement to the budget item or it also you know, reduces the line item. So if uh, the church has already paid for a youth trip, and some parents are able to reimburse the church for a portion or all of their child's trip, the money goes into that expense account and it reduces the, um, the cost that would have been incurred had, had parents not been able to help. And we have some other miscellaneous transactions here. Uh, if your printer has ever eaten a check beyond the point of usability 
Or I had an example the other day that somebody started printing donation statements on someone else's checks. We can enter those checks as spoiled check numbers um, so that everybody knows check number 556 just didn't randomly walk out of the church office. We can do an asset adjustment. Most churches just do cash tracking with church windows, but you can do uh, asset tracking if you want. We can get a deposit correction. Sometimes the bank's just a couple pennies off from what we sent, what we thought. Um, and the majority of churches who use church windows accounting uh, also use church windows payroll. Uh, if your church does not, maybe, maybe you have an outside payroll service that handles it, or maybe you are one of those very brave and patient souls who has the patience <laughs> to go through the charts and the books of if you make more than this amount but less than this amount this is your taxable withholding and enter all that manually it, it's actually not that difficult to do church windows makes it pretty easy but i personally would rather it be done through payroll or <laughs> or some some other way in almost everything you do in church windows you don't have to worry about what is the debit and what is the credit the system's very self-prompting but if you need to do a, a, a journal entry for some reason, you can debit and credit to your heart's content right here on the journal entry transaction function. Let's look at the accounts in accounting. Now, Church Windows accounting is fund accounting. So it is the kind of accounting that the grand poobahs at the Financial Accounting Standards Board that FASB says nonprofit organizations and churches should be using to track their money. The nice part of it is with a single asset account, you can have an unlimited number of little pockets or buckets of money. You could track them separately, but still have all that money in one uh, checking account. Now, a lot of times churches do have more, but we still can have multiple funds whose money, whose monies add up to the amount in a single asset account. And the types of accounts that we use in fund accounting are asset, liability, fund balance, income, and expense. So you're, you're uh, and let's click on the little plus here. Let's expand the liability. We've got another little plus here next to accounts payable where I've got a nice neat listing of all the vendors, the people that I pay. If I click on one of those and come over to this vendor payee tab, I can enter information that would print on the check maybe. Uh, our account number with them, their tax ID number, uh, what expense account is typically charged when we pay them, any kind of information like that is, that's really handy to have. We can store it here on the chart of accounts. If your church does budgeting, it's very easy to enter. Uh, there's even this handy dandy budget projection tool which can forecast a future year's budget based on the previous year's actual income based on the previous year's actual expenses or based on the previous year's budget. So if you want to uh, say all of your giving is going to, all of your income is going to increase by 5% and your expenses are going to decrease by 20%, wouldn't that be nice? Um, you could do kind of an across the board projection using the budget projection tool. The report section of accounting is probably not surprisingly very in-depth. Uh, under the financial reports, these are the three reports that most committees get on a monthly basis. There is the balance sheet, assets equals liabilities plus fund balances for fund accounting. The fund activity report is probably the heart of any fund software, so I'm actually going to look at it. Um, and you can choose what columns you want included on the report. This is true of any of the reports. What font you want it printed in and what funds you want included on this. I'm just going to go right to a print preview and show you why this report is very handy to committees. Let's expand the preview. This is the way all previews and all modules look. So you've got, you can expand it, you can check your printer settings, but for this fund activity report it basically tells us what is the starting balance for the period, what came in, what went out, any kind of transfers or journal entries, and what our ending balance is. And like all of the reports in the program, we can print this, 
we can PDF and email this program, this uh, report. We can email it as a spreadsheet. We can export it to the desktop as a spreadsheet or as a, uh, uh, maybe as a text document. Uh, text document would probably be more for membership things. Maybe you're using it as a, as a data file for a mail merge in Word or something like that. But you see, you can get the, you can export these and, and email reports directly out of the program in a number of different ways. The third financial report that most committees get on a regular basis is the treasurer's report. Uh, it's, it's basically a profit and loss report. It deals with income and expense. We can choose what columns we want included. Let's add one. I'm going to add the over under year to date to this. And I can even choose in what order the columns appear. Let's put it as the very last column here. The level of detail I want based on my subtotals, font size, of course, and here comes a preview. Now, this report prints landscape by default because it's got a number of columns going across the page. But if you choose too many columns and your font's larger, like mine is, there we go, That last, those last couple columns I chose ran off the page. So I could either make the font smaller, which committees probably aren't going to like too much, I would guess, or I can go to my page setup and just make this uh, landscape legal. And now everything fits on the page. There's that over under year to date that uh, that I added. So still a nice still a nice snapshot. Doesn't give the totals. This deals with the income and expenses. So the inflows, outflows, profit loss, whatever you want to call it. And of course we can print it, export it to Excel, PDF and email it however we need to. Under our transaction reports, these are kind of self-explanatory. Check register, deposit slip. General ledger is a great report that will show a running balance. So for any given period, any given account, it will show you where it started, how it went up, how it went down, and where it ended up. Transaction journal is just a raw listing of transactions. There's also accounts payable report and accounts receivable report. So we can see a report of who owes us and who we owe. Get your list chart of accounts, summary of cash activity, trial balance, We've got budget reports. And accounting handles the basic tax reports of the 1099 and the 1096. So we can send a 1099 off to vendors that have done work for us throughout the year and the 1096 off to whatever taxing authority you need to. Um, the majority of tax reports are handled by payroll, and we're actually going to cover that next after we've got a couple more things to cover here. One is talking about the bank reconciliation, which to me is an excruciating process that I never find enjoyable. But I do have to admit, Church Windows makes it pretty easy. Uh, there is even a wizard built into the bank reconciliation that if your difference to reconcile isn't zero the very first time, the the wizard will uh, will kind of help run you through a few things. Maybe do a deposit comparison to see if that's where the discrepancy is. Maybe some line item detail would help find the discrepancy. So the wizard kind of can help you get in balance if uh, if by chance you aren't the first time. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but much like envelope numbers in donations, you can choose to or not or choose not to use account numbers. You can just use Church Windows Accounting with just account names. If you do choose to use account numbers, you can control the structure of it. So some churches just want a four-digit account number. Some might want six digits with a period in the middle. Some might want what you see on the button here, which is digit, period, three digits, period, three digits. So you control exactly how the account numbers look if you choose to use them. And if you happen to be in that, let's say you're in that account number, uh, you're here renumbering, looking to renumber the chart of accounts or change the account structure, and you're not sure what you're doing, remember there's always that F1 for help right there where it opens up the help immediately for change account number structure. So help is very helpful in church windows. Mm -hmm.